Indonesia at Melbourne, 27th of October 2023, How Green and False is China's Belt and Road Investment in Indonesia? The Chinese government hosted its fifth Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, summit in Hong Kong on October 17 to 18, 2023. It was a historic occasion honoring the 10th anniversary of the start of BRI in 2013. Over 130 countries sent representatives to the summit this year. One prominent guest was President of Indonesia Yoko Joko Widodo, who state-owned Enterprises Minister Eric Thohir, Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi, and Trade Minister Zulkifli Hassan joined. During the summit's opening remarks, Joko We emphasized the value of partnerships that benefit both parties and the long-term viability of projects. After that, he proceeded to Beijing for the Indonesia-China Business Forum, announcing several new investment agreements centered on green development. When BRI first started, it was noticeably lacking in Green's Peak. It is currently the preferred adjective to characterize Chinese investment in Indonesia. But in reality, how eco-friendly are Chinese investments? Indonesia is emerging as the BRI's crown jewel under Jokowi's leadership, infrastructure growth and the economy have been highlights of China-Indonesia ties. China is currently Indonesia's second-largest investment partner and its most significant commercial partner. A 2021 aid data study indicates that it is also among the top beneficiaries of BRI funding. On the fringes of the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, summit, Jokowi met with Chinese President Xi Jinping, who praised the newly opened Jakarta Bandung Fast Train as a BRI golden brand. Given that the two nations are debating expanding the project to Surabaya, it is undoubtedly one of the most well-known investments made as part of the BRI. In addition, Xi pledged support for developing sectors such as electric vehicles, EVs, photovoltaic, PV, solar energy, and the digital economy. Furthermore, he advocated for a regional comprehensive economic corridor to facilitate a more thorough integration of industrial supply chains. During the visit, Jokowi and 31 Indonesian private and state-owned firms and Minister of Trade Thai announced during the Indonesia-China Business Forum in Beijing that 11 new investment transactions totaling US$12.6 billion were signed. According to reports, these expenditures will go toward developing EV batteries, renewable energy, and healthcare. This follows the announcement during Jokowi's most recent visit to China in July of a significant US$11.5 billion investment in quartz sand processing an essential first step in the growth of a homegrown PV solar industry. Putting green development front and center due to increased scrutiny on the environmental sustainability of investments undertaken under the Belt and Road Initiative, green development was a significant topic of discussion in the run-up to the Beijing summit. Since 2019, China has been pushing for a more environmentally friendly version of the Belt and Road Initiative BRI. Still, some analysts are unsure if this goes against the principles of green growth. For example, each year, fossil fuel power facilities sponsored by the Belt and Road Initiative contribute about 245 million tons of carbon dioxide. The Chinese government declared in 2021 that it will no longer construct new coal-fired power facilities abroad. However, research indicates that up to 86% of China's financing for energy projects in Indonesia is directed toward establishing coal-fired power plants via the China Export-Import Bank Chexim, and the China Development Bank. CDB. Furthermore, the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, still invests in constructing captive coal-fired power plants, which provide localized power-generating capabilities for specific industrial projects. The construction of a 4 times 380-megawatt coal power station on Obi Island in North Maluku is one such project. This joint venture between Harita Group of Indonesia and Legend of China will power local nickel smelters. This is noteworthy in the Indonesian context because, to assist Indonesia in extracting more value downstream from its natural resources, the Jokowi administration has prioritized foreign investment in industrial projects, particularly energy-intensive nickel smelters. Many projects involve social and environmental costs in addition to emissions, particularly nickel smelters, which frequently contaminate the surrounding environment and depend significantly on foreign labor. For example, it has been reported that activities at the Morowali Industrial Park, the epicenter of the nickel industry in Indonesia, have caused surplus coal reserves to be washed into the sea by precipitation, turning salt water black. Inquiry into fraudulent Chinese green investments is necessary. Joe Kowi's presence at the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, summit underscores Indonesia's growing dependence on China to finance a fictitious energy shift. On the one hand, 
Chinese investment is opening doors for domestic PV solar and electric car manufacturing growth. This could hasten Indonesia's transition to clean energy sources and economic development. However, the costs of these investments to society and the environment are growing. China must take more significant steps to guarantee that its BRI investments are transparent, do not harm the environment, and do not negatively impact workers or local people. It's also necessary to make the complaint procedures for affected populations explicit. To draw in green investment from foreign partners, the Indonesian government must define the social and environmental standards more clearly and be steadfast in enforcing them. It must also exercise greater discernment in selecting industrial projects that will enable it to maintain its carbon emissions in a downward trajectory. Instead, the divisive omnibus bills enacted in 2020 undermined environmental safeguards and protections. Civil society organizations and local communities must enforce accountability. This won't be simple. It is becoming more difficult to distinguish between ethical and unethical green deals since green language has become ingrained in contemporary economic diplomacy.